Uh, my name is Landon Mascarenas, and I have about five minutes to convince you all to be rural education reform advocates, so buckle up. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so the central question here is how can we bring the energy, momentum, and passion that you all have for education reform in urban communities to the rural communities of our country? Rural communities deserve just that amount of attention and energy. And why do they deserve that? Because 23% of all the kids in this country go to school in rural communities, right? That's almost a quarter of our country in rural communities right now. Due to some recent research out of Stanford and Harvard, we see that actually rural communities act in income typical ways, not achievement typical ways, which means that if you're a high performing, low income kid that goes to school in an urban community, you will actually have a greater chance of going to really selective schools when you live in that urban community. But rural communities, those kids don't do that, which means that we have an enormous opportunity gap compared to our urban communities in our rural communities as well. Rural poverty is exceptionally prevalent across this country. In the states that are listed right up here, more than 50% of the people that live in rural communities are in extreme poverty. In New Mexico, that number, where, where I was at for the last seven years of my life, that number is nearly 80%. So why rural communities? And I'm going to talk about a potential method that I think we can do to catalyze the education and the opportunity that exists in rural communities. First, you may not agree with this approach, but I think one thing you can imagine, and if you don't agree with charter schools, that's okay, but one thing is very true, there are very few exemplars, let alone examples, of innovation and entrepreneurship and education in rural communities, and we need to provide that. So let's first imagine what a network of rural education charter schools could do, placed in different communities across this country. But on top of that, let's imagine a companion institute that does research on that charter network and the different impact it's having in all these different communities, but also provides, provides support, technical support, and helps build the capacity of the surrounding school systems in rural communities to be able to build out whatever education innovation they want to build for themselves. Because one thing that's also really true is our rural communities and rural school districts lack a lot of capacity and support to be able to innovate in the ways that a lot of our urban schools do as well. And also, what about an experiential program that brings together kids from both the charter school and the local public school to have common conversations about what it's like to grow up in a rural community, what their aspirations are, what it would like for them to go and come back and have those conversations as both as one community that makes sense for them. So let's talk about what this potential school could look like. So first off, it has to be anchored in the deep cultural and community context of, this, of these communities, whether it's African American, Latino or Native American, where I worked for the last seven years, our schools, whether they're public or charter schools or private schools, must deeply reflect the values and community context of, of, of these communities. What's so different in a lot of our communities in rural areas, there are communities that have been there for nearly thousands of years, that have traditions and cultures that ought to be respected and built directly into the work of the schools right there. So if we've anchored ourselves in that community context, then what's next? Right now, there's a big conversation in our country about building character traits and social justice views in terms of our schools. Let's think about building those character traits based on the community context. If your community prizes collectivism over individualism, or individualism over collectivism, let's bind that directly into the character of that school. One of the great myths of rural education is that information technology and technology access doesn't exist. That is untrue. Some of our rural communities across this country are some of the most wired communities in the, in the entire country. And in places where it's hard to find great teachers and leaders in some rural communities where it's hard to recruit these people, information technology and effectively adaptive learning technology like blended learning has an opportunity to have enormous additive potential in places like lab rotations, classrooms, or flex models, right? And some of these schools that are happening in urban communities are really experimenting with this. In rural communities, this can have enormous impact and break down the myths and connect kids in rural communities to other urban communities and places around the world in ways that are very easy and make, easy to make happen. So then let's think about actually taking a best practice from around the world, the Tutoria program that's happening down in Mexico that actually says, let's have teachers teach kids. This is happening in rural communities all over Mexico. Let's have teachers teach kids and then kids teach other kids to break down the power hierarchies, empower the kids in those schools. And if you combine that with the social justice traits, the deep community context, you could have something that's very powerful that would reinvigorate the opportunity and entrepreneurialism in these communities. So the school potentially could have an early pre-K model, because pre-K is really hard to find in rural communities. It would only be K-8 for a really good reason. The local high schools are central foundational pillars of communities. Kids should have the opportunity to be a part of that alongside their other peers. But while they're doing that, they should go to the experience program, 
where they're having conversations with the local charter school kids and the local public school kids to talk about what it's like to grow in a rural community if they decide to go to whatever post-secondary institution that makes sense for them. I taught in a rural community. They deserve all the opportunities. These kids deserve all the opportunities that any kid in urban communities have. Thank you very much.